Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. We have received a lot of appreciation on this series so thank you for that. Today we are going to go into the sixth topic in the series of medical statistics made easy. We have divided this topic into two parts and today we are going to discuss data organization and visualization. So we have already seen the DCOVA framework, that is we have seen the types of variable measurement scales, types of data. We have seen sample and sampling in the previous parts of this series. And today we are going to see the organization and visualization of categorical data. In the next part of this video, we will see the organization and visualization of numerical data. If you feel this topic is not important, this is an ICU monitor where a lot of data has been organized and presented in a way that you can understand your patient's clinical status in just a glance at the monitor. This is basically the essence of data organization and visualization to make the data appealing to the readers and to help them understand the data in the most simplified manner. So what are the steps of data organization and visualization? The first point you have to understand is the number of variables that you have studied and the number of variables that you need to organize and visualize. Then you see the type of data, nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio, the measurement scale. You organize it and then you visualize it. Okay. So these are the four steps that we will be following for all the four types of data. As you follow these rules, apart from that, the aim is to simplify the data and you can understand the study better and you can communicate it better to your audience by using these organization and visualization techniques. So let us see the first part is we have a single variable to study, which is nominal. We will see first how to organize the data, that is the tables, and then we will visualize the same data with the help of various charts. So suppose you are taking the gender of patients in your study. This is a nominal data, right? Male or female categories. 20 patients have been selected. So how to organize this data? Very easy. You can organize it using a frequency table. That is, there are 12 males and 8 females. So compared to the random data that is presented to you first, this table is very easy to understand. Males are more than females. Other way to express this is, is in percentage, which is known as a relative frequency percentage table. You can see that 60% are males and 40% are females, right? So, so this is how you can organize a very random nominal or categorical data into a frequency table or a relative frequency percentage table. Why is it known as relative frequency? Because the ratio of male and female, the total has to be one, right? So the total of all the categories that you study in categorical data has to be one or 100 percentage. That is why it is known as relative frequency percentage table, right? We understand that there is no rank and no order in nominal data and therefore you don't have cumulative frequency in nominal or categorical data, right? So this is a very important point to remember. We will see why this is important when we do the next example, okay? So now remember this data, 12 males and 8 females, when we will now visualize this or beautify this data. How can you visualize it? You can visualize it using a pie chart as is seen here, or you can use a bar chart, right? So a pie chart or a bar chart can be used to visualize nominal or categorical data. Now understand this bar chart very important. See that there is gap between the two bars, the male and the female. There is gap between the two bars. You can have horizontal bar or vertical bar chart, right? So the X and Y axis are interchangeable. Remember these points because in upcoming talks, you will see how to differentiate bar chart from a histogram, okay? Similarly, you can use nominal data for age, marriage, occupation, as well as diet pattern when you use these data in categorical fashion. For example, married, unmarried, or not wishing to say, 
occupation you can have professional or employee or something like that categories or you can have diet pattern wage non wage right categorical data all of these can be organized and visualized in the same fashion now going to the next example you have ordinal data okay which we are going to organize into tables and then visualize into charts so in this first example you have the ordinal data why is this ordinal data because it's a patient satisfaction score where you have not satisfied somewhat satisfied satisfied and very satisfied so the data has an order okay but it is a categorical data because there is no interval or ratio in this data right so again you can use a frequency table to summarize this data okay or you can have a relative frequency percentage table or you can have a cumulative frequency table remember that here you have an order and therefore cumulative frequency can be used so what you do is you put the categories in order not not satisfied somewhat satisfied satisfied and very satisfied and then you keep adding okay from top to bottom what you do is up to not sat satisfied you have 3 then up to somewhat satisfied is 3 plus 6 that is 9 then up to satisfied is 3 plus 6 plus 6 that is 15 and when you reach up to very satisfied it is 20 out of 20 that is how cumulative frequency is calculated right so you can have cumulative frequency when there is order or ranking data. Similarly, you can use this for level of education, age, malnutrition and obesity. Okay, if, if you are using ordinal or categorical variable, you can have frequency, relative frequency percentage and cumulative frequency table for organization. When you want to visualize, you can have the same, the pie chart or the bar chart, bar chart. But there is also something known as a cumulative chart, which shows the cumulative frequency in a visualized manner, right? Here it is a bar chart only, but the black line with the dots show the cumulative frequency. And the right hand side of the scale shows the cumulative frequency number, right? So the black dots correspond to the right hand side of the scale, whereas the left hand side of the scale is for the bar chart, right? So that is how a cumulative chart is constructed for ordinal data. There is also something known as a Pareto chart, which is very similar to a bar chart and cumulative chart. The difference is that in a Pareto chart, you arrange the data in descending order of frequency, okay? you arrange the data in descending order of frequency. What that means is for our data, we know that satisfied and somewhat satisfied have the highest frequency, which is six and six. So you put those two bars before very satisfied and not satisfied. So you can see that this is same, same data, but it is arranged in descending order and then charted, which is known as a Pareto chart okay the important is that it can give you a very visual information on the most important cause problem or solution what that means is that by looking simply at this chart you can easily make out that satisfied and somewhat satisfied are most commonly occurring and very few patients are not satisfied right so that that is the importance of a pareto chart so to summarize these two categorical data for nominal data, we can organize using frequency table and relative frequency percentage table. And for visualization, we can use bar chart, pie chart or Pareto chart. And for ordinal or ranked data, we can organize them into frequency table, relative frequency percentage table and also cumulative frequency table. And for visualization, we also have a cumulative frequency chart. Right? So that is how categorical data is organized and visualized. In the next part of this video, we will see how the numerical data is organized and visualized. Thank you.